Last week we saw GCN put a Shimano Altegra DI2 group set through a number of torturous tests to determine how durable that group set really was. They, well they rode it, they buried it alive, and they flew and swam with it in the ocean. There was cause for celebration after each torturous test as the group set continued to shift flawlessly. I kind of expected the video was sponsored by Shimano. Nevertheless, it was an entertaining watch, so highly recommended for a few laughs. But let's be honest, if you've spent your own money on a DI2 group set, it's unlikely you'll be putting it through those kind of tests. However, what you will likely be doing though is regular firmware updates with the eTube app that Shimano make. So today, that's what I'm putting to the test. Will the DI2 group set survive a failed firmware update? No, it doesn't. It completely destroys it. What do you expect, Llama? GP Sheepy, you don't have a speaking role in this video and stop giving away my clickbait headlines. <sighs> okay, here I am in the Llama garage performing some general maintenance on the DI2 Altegra road bike that I have. The chain is off for a clean and to show you that the DI2 changing does work, that's the rear, the front's doing its trim. So that's all working. Now, let's check if there's a new firmware update available for any of these components. And let's throw a spanner in the works during that update process. For that, we'll require the eTube project software, which I'll load up here on the screen. And to connect, I'll need to press the junction A for about a second, and away we go. Okay, we're now connected to the DI2 via the Bluetooth module that I have installed. We'll click OK on this to confirm what I have on screen. We'll go over to the update tab and surprise surprise there's a firmware update available for the rear derailleur. Let's go about breaking that. So I'll click on that one to update. We'll hit update. Now it says here do not perform any other operations during this update so it does give us the disclaimer there we shouldn't be playing around with this or multitasking. Let's hit update on that. Now let's just say my phone battery dies, or let's just say I go out of range, or let's just say Bluetooth happens to not connect or work or disconnect or do something crazy during this process. To simulate that, I'll just simply close this update app as soon as it gets to 1%. There we go, oh, 3%. Let's close that off, simulating a crashed firmware update. Now, the question is, does it shift? And the answer to that is no, it's completely killed the rear derailleur. I have no shifting. Front shifter. I have front shifting. Did that, re no, that didn't restore the back. Okay, there we go. This concludes the clickbait part of this video that I have completely destroyed the shifting of my DI2 group set just with the mobile phone that I have in my hand. Now onto the less clickbaity and more interesting part of the video. How to fix this? Will a disconnect and a reconnect fix this one? No, apparently it's not that easy. What happens if we reconnect this to the eTube software? Again, single small press on the junction box to put that into Bluetooth management connection mode. We'll try and connect back with the tool. Okay, the eTube mobile app is attempting to restore the firmware. Let's see how this goes. Okay, it tells me the firmware has been restored. We'll click OK on this. We can't change obviously while we're in uh, management mode. Okay, the reader railer has been detected so it knows it's there on the system which is good, it just simply hasn't ghosted it off into the ether. We'll click on update. So according to the app, everything has been restored to the latest firmware and everything should be working again. Okay, we'll click on disconnect. And there we have it, everything is back to life with the app that I destroyed things with in the first place. One thing of note with this scenario that I've run through here is that it did require a working DI2 system for me to connect to via Bluetooth to restore that, what I would call the endpoint peripheral over here, the rear derailleur. The same goes for the front derailleur, the levers, and possibly the climbing switch as well. 
If you have a dead battery or a dead Bluetooth module, you're not gonna have much luck using the mobile phone to try and connect to the system. It just won't respond. In those instances, you'll need to use the eTube Windows software and either the battery charger, which comes with all DI2 systems, or the more expensive PC Link. So the takeaways from today's video is, don't be too afraid to do DI2 firmware updates. If something goes wrong, it'll never be terminal. You can either fix it with your mobile phone or with that USB charger, or find a friend or a local bike store with that PC Link device. I'll link below in the video description to bettershifting.com, a really handy website for all things DI2, and many thanks for their help in showing me how to revert to an older firmware on that rear derailleur so I could run through this process today. And a final note for today, if you are running the wireless module on your DI2 system, which can connect to your head unit and the mobile app, do not use the default password. It would be very, very simple for someone to come up, press the button for a second, pull their mobile phone out, connect to your DI2 system, perform that update, fail it like I did, and brick your DI2 until you've figured out what the hell has just gone on. You don't wanna get yourself into that scenario. So if your default password is all zeros or all ones, probably go and change that soon. Okay, we'll leave this one here for today. Hopefully you found this one informative. It's always a bit of fun getting some hands-on breaking and fixing things here in the Llama Garage. As always, if you've enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up and remember to hit subscribe to support this channel and be alerted of new videos. Thanks for watching.